overflowing blessings, tithes, there is a distinct difference between tithes and offerings. They are mentioned separately throughout the Bible, even though the Lord requires both to be brought to him. The tithe is the tenth of all the increase that God gives to you. What does increase include? Increase is everything that increases the value of earthly possessions that God places into your trust, whether it be earned income or unearned gifts. A tenth of everything that is increased to you belongs to God in the form of tithes. The tithe of your increase is not yours to give to God. It is God's for you to give to God, and it is a privilege for us to have it to give to Him. Listen carefully to Jesus' condemnation of the Pharisees, for it is very easily misunderstood. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, names of spices, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. Scroll down. Those words of the Jesus can be misconstrued to mean that Israel's religious leaders were doing evil by being very careful to bring God tithes of all that entered as increase into their homes. But that is not the case, for Jesus goes on to state in the rest of that verse from Matthew 23 23, These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Those men were evil, not because they brought God tithes of everything that was increased to them, but because they neglected the love and truth of God. If you own a business, your increase is what is called profit. It is the gross amount of money you have earned, minus all business deductions. You figure the tithe on that amount, your net earnings, before taxes are paid to the government. God comes first. Offerings. Offerings are gifts brought to God beyond the tithes. The tithe was always 10% of one's increase, but with certain offerings, God gave his people some discretion as to the amount or number of offerings to bring. Their financial situation in life and the depth of their zeal for God was shown by their choices concerning offerings. Here are some of the offerings that God instituted in Israel for the people to bring to his servants. There was the offering of first fruits, which was a little offering taken from among the earliest of unripening crops. This offering was not in the form of money but in the form of crops. It was a required offering, but the amount of first fruits brought to God was never specified. The people had some discretion as to the amount. There was the offering of the firstborn of your female animals. All that often of the matrix is mine said the Lord. X 34, 19. If the newborn animal belonged in the category of unclean animals, it was not offered on God's altar, but it still was his. There was the offering of the firstborn child in every family. The firstborn belonged to God, whether animal or human. Instead of bringing to the Lord's temple the firstborn child of every Israelite mother, however, the Lord required Israel to offer a certain amount of money instead of the firstborn child. Every male was required to offer a small offering of money with him whenever God commanded the leaders of Israel to take a census. The poor could not offer less, and the rich could not offer more. X 30, 14 15. A census was rarely taken in Israel, but when one was taken, each male had to make this offering to the Lord three times each year. There was another small offering required of all the males in Israel when they presented themselves before the Lord at his temple. Temple. At times, there were offerings taken from the people for special occasions, such as the erecting of the tabernacle, X25, 1-9, or the restoration of the temple during the days of Judah's King Josh, 2KGS 12, 4-12. On these occasions, God's people always responded with great generosity and joy. The children of God are the most generous people on earth. When Moses let the people of Israel know that God had told him to collect an offering of materials for erecting a tabernacle, the people brought so much that Moses had to tell them to stop. X 36, 5 7. Later, after the tabernacle was built and God required an offering for the dedication of it, God specified how much of an offering was to be brought by each tribe, otherwise, Moses may well have had another problem with too much being brought to the Lord. For his children who were especially happy to belong to God and have a part in his covenant. 
God provided a way to express their gratitude by commanding his priests to receive a thanksgiving offering for sacrifice if anyone among his people wanted to offer it to God. These are the offerings mentioned in the Bible that come to mind as I write this. None of these offerings were tithes, still, all of the required offerings rightly belonged to God, and it was robbery not to bring them to him when it was time to do so. From almost all of the sacrificial offerings on God's altar, the priests and their families were given a large portion of the animal for their food, it was their portion from God. When cattle were offered, the priest who actually did the work of making the sacrifice was awarded the hide of the animal as part of his pay from God. From this we see that offerings of animals brought to be sacrificed to the Lord were part of God's system of support for his servants. As long as God's people were obedient, they were happy and blessed, and as long as they were happy and blessed, they freely brought their tithes and offerings to the Lord, and when they did that, God's servants always had more than they needed to live and provide for their families. We no longer bring animals to sacrifice to God. The physical forms that certain offerings took in the Old Testament no longer exists. But God's servants and their families still need food, and God's servants still use earthly money to do things they need to do for the good of the body. In this new covenant, God has not left his people with no way to express their gratitude for his goodness, and he has not left his ministers with no means of support from the children of God. The system of tithes and offerings is still vital for the spiritual health of the body, and I have never seen anyone with a right spirit refuse to acknowledge that. Chapter 2. Tithes and Offerings, Don't Tip God. He is not your servant. God commanded his people to support financially those whom he anoints to minister to them. When he revealed to his people that 10% of their increase, the tithe, was his and must be given to his servants, along with the offerings that he required as well, he was not negotiating a position. He was not trying to strike a deal with his people, demanding 10%, but really hoping to finally get his people to agree to donate 5% of their increase. God's words are pure and true. He means exactly what he says, no more and no less. We are so used to dealing with liars on this earth that it takes faith to believe that God means only what he says. He is so serious about the tithe, a word that means a tenth part, and the offerings that he requires, that he considers any of his children who fail to render their tithes and offerings to him to be thieves. The prophet Malachi was sent with this holy complaint to Israel, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, saith the Lord. This statement was received with some skepticism by God's people, and they responded, How have we robbed God? In tithes and offerings came the terse reply, If a man would steal from God, he would murder his own mother. If he would steal from God, there is nothing that he would not do to any human being. You cannot trust any man who steals from God. Some of God's children do what God hates most. They try to find some middle ground between obeying God and disobeying God. They don't have the love of God or the faith to bring him the tithes that he has commanded, but they are ashamed to give nothing. They won't obey God by rendering to him all that is his in tithes and offerings, so they give just enough to mollify their aching conscience and maintain appearances. But that middle ground is the worst of all choices. It would be better if they simply refused to obey God at all and gave nothing than for them to give just a part of what he has commanded. That amounts to nothing but tipping God, as if he were your servant and they are doing him a favor. It is no more than tipping God for his blessings, as if he were a waiter, forced to take whatever they deem him worthy to receive. Some pride themselves on being big tippers, but if what they bring to God is not their tithes and offerings, they are still disobeying his commandment and are still thieves. Do not be foolish. If you will not bring God all his tithes and offerings, please don't insult him by donating a few bucks to his work. Jesus doesn't need your charity or your pity, and he has not commanded that his faithful servants must live on tips. My friends, Jesus wants us either to be hot or cold. He would prefer that we either obey God's commandment and bring him all our tithes and offerings, or just admit to ourselves that we are just sinners and go away and leave him alone. It is sinful to give God's anointed servants a little tip now and then, 
just so you can appear to be doing something good. It is sin to bring God $300 when your tithe is $600. It is stubbornness and rebellion. It is thievery. It is unbelief. It is unacceptable with God because he was not negotiating when he commanded the tenth part of your increase. Tithing is a commandment, not a suggestion. When one young man asked Jesus what he must do in order to obtain eternal life, Jesus told him, You know the commandments? If God had never commanded his people to bring their tithes to his servants, then it would be acceptable to do something else. But God did issue that commandment, and we are required to obey it. When someone asked my father, many years ago, whether or not a child of God who refused to bring his tithes and offerings to the Lord would have a chance to be saved in the end, my father responded, he will have as much of a chance to be saved as would a thief. Whatever chance a thief has, he will have. One of the Ten Commandments is, Thou shalt not steal, should we construe that commandment to mean, Thou shalt not steal, except from the Lord of course not. We should be more afraid to steal from God than from anyone else. Besides, stealing is stealing, no matter who the victim is. If the money in your possession is not rightfully yours, then it is stolen money. Listen to Jesus, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's, taxes rightfully belong to the government, Caesar, the tithe of your increase, and the offerings that God demands, belong to God, and we make ourselves thieves if we refuse to give them to him.